G'day guys, this is an unedited version of my hit a couple of days ago with my new batting coach, former WA cricketer, um, Scott Muleman, who is now a batting coach of Mitch and Sean Marsh. Um, also works with Jonathan Wells and a few other very high level players here in Western Australia. He's a good friend of mine and um, he's been, he owns the cricket centre where I do my coaching and I said to him a few weeks ago I wanted to start hitting with him, try and have a hit once a week get him to throw me balls and just talk about different things, what he's seeing, his ideas. He's got a few different ideas to what I do as a coach. So I'm always open to new things, always trying to learn and evolve my game. And I wore my mic um, throughout our session and um, had a really good hit with Scotty. Um, had to really work hard on my back foot. Haven't done enough good quality practice on my back foot recently and haven't really hit much. I've had about five, six hits in the preseason. We're now two weeks away from the season starting. So I'm going to start upping my training a lot more now, but I've been delaying it, um, trying to not start too early due to being a bit older now and wanting to stay fresh throughout the year. So that all being said, I hope you enjoy this piece of content. I hope you enjoy watching me have my net. It's completely unedited. Um, so please leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Yeah, so obviously I um you haven't seen me play for a while. I I feel like my biggest issue is falling across. Yep. So the last few years I've really worked hard at trying to sort of be here and access the leg side better. Yep. Um, something I think I want to try and work on this year is trying to score more off the back foot. I yep. think my pull shot, you when I was younger and I just played a bit more with a bit more freedom, yep. I used to pull quite well. Yep. Um, so a bit of back foot and then a fair bit of, I want to try and play spin well as well. Okay. So just obviously everything, but yep. there are a couple of things I, I think that I need to continue to improve. Yep. And just keep being positive, like I feel like when I get too caught up in technique or too caught up in sort of little things, Yep. I get a bit sort of within myself and don't try and hit the ball. <laughs> well, essentially, and I had probably a similar problem to you in games as well. I mean, you want to get the, you get the volume of your technique in in training and then you don't want to be thinking of any of that crap in, yeah. when you're playing. Yeah. So, um, so obviously all you want to be doing is watching the ball and then moving as quick as you can. I mean, you might self-assess. So, for example, if you stuff something up, you mm. might, I think, one... One I've had, you know, people doing. I think it's a pretty good idea. When they walk away to square leg, they might sort of think, oh, okay, I could have got a bit further forward. But then when they turn around and come back, back the square on. legs of the crease, then they're basically switching back onto the next ball and putting that out of their mind. So yep. for you thinking, I'm getting caught up with my technique. Well, that's just a mental thing. Yeah. yeah actually, yeah. in a game. Yeah, I yeah. I think you want to be thinking of that stuff too much. Yeah. 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 Like I said, I'm just going to throw for yep. a while and then I'll just see. Yeah. Go from there. Yeah. Just caught on the crease, I didn't commit forward or back. Yeah. I think you've been caught on the crease a few times, the first one. And that's probably from when I played with you, one thing that I reckon you needed to get better at yep. is actually moving. So essentially, I would rather you make a choice and stuff it up. So go forward to something you should go back, or go back to something you go forward, but at least make a choice. Yeah. I think a lot of people, when they're batting, 
that's their go-to is to step here, okay? And the problem with that is, when you just commit, and even before you see where the ball's gonna be, you step there, and a lot of people think, oh, it's just gonna help my front foot. Well, it doesn't. Yeah, you so get that stuck, means your yeah. front foot goes in exactly the same spot every time. So instead of seeing the ball stay outside off and stepping there, you always step there, and then you end up playing there, or you're playing around your front pad. So I reckon it might just be for you to really just concentrate on obviously watching the ball, first and then feeling like you're going to make a decision, one or the other, okay? So you're either going to get, try and get forward, or if you see it short, you're going to try and get back, but not just think about, I think sometimes as well, some people, for me, it didn't work that well for me just saying, watch the ball. I mean, it's the most important thing, it's obvious, you watch the ball. But for me, that didn't work as well as, for me, I used to say to myself, where's the ball? Mm. Because that used to make me, obviously I had to watch the ball to see where it is and then move quickly to it. Whereas sometimes I think if you just watch the ball, watch the ball, watch the ball, then you can watch the ball and actually not move. Mm. So as you, I reckon you could maybe play around with actually having a reaction, sort of something that you say. Like yeah, well, I say win this ball usually, but I, like for those first four balls that haven't been sanded, I've probably been sort of a bit nothing. So I've got yeah. to probably win this ball, I've got to probably say that yeah. well, you and get in. Even in practice though, especially obviously, it's probably a little bit different when you're on the machine, but if someone's throwing to you, you should try and have the same pre-ball pre routine. Yeah, yeah, when yeah, 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 come on. Top hand still a little bit weak, but just got work to do. Okay, pretty good. Got back better. You reckon you can have more weight on your right foot? Is that about fifth? Alongside your knee, okay? So that means that more often than not, if you take a short step with pretty much everyone I coach, they'll hit out in front of their pad, okay? And hitting out in front of your pad means you're hitting out yep. in front of your, you know, people talk about hitting below your eyes. So if you get a step in, obviously your head goes with it, you can hit below your eyes. If you take a short step, hit out in front, well then you're hitting way out in front of your eyes. Yep. Not many people hit the ball there, do they? No, I, I completely agree. What I meant in that video and what I believe is, when I go too big and my weight sits here, then I do the same thing I get too early. So if it's too short, I 100% agree, I go like that and I push at it. Yeah. So it's, it's sort of having, having somewhere in between that allows me to sort of get into the ball, but my weight then isn't, if it's too big, I feel like I sit 
back. Yeah, and that's your, th- I mean, for me, I like getting a big step, but I would feel for me to get my weight going forward, I mean, there's a few different things that can get the same outcome in terms of people bending you, you bend the knee, you get your head forward straight away. If you've had something, some people feel like they're getting a left shoulder into the ball, okay, that, but obviously, you shoulder, get your shoulder into the ball, you head forward, and then there's up there, just the thing, get your head forward. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, I'm happy for you to feel like yeah you're not overstriding. But I know I needed that needed to be bigger. Very short. Step. Yeah, yeah. It's impossible to hit a long side. Yeah, hundred percent agree. Hundred percent. See, that was a slightly bigger step and hit it a bit later, didn't I? Not on my back foot, I can feel it. Sorry, camera. It'll be a bit quicker getting back, don't I? Yeah. Like I said, I don't think it's how far you get back to the streets. It's about transferring the weight. Yeah. Right yeah. So you'll find just a lot of you stepping back really good, and then you're leaving this left leg here. And you actually, when you make contact, I reckon all your weight's on the left leg. Yeah, I agree. I think that's the right size step. I think that's not too big, not too small. That's what I want to try and get to consistently. Not bad. At least you made a choice then. Yeah. Nope.
Can't clear that leg yet. Yep, yep. Good. I think I was thinking about going back a bit there, rather than just... Yeah, see, I'd probably play out of the back foot. We could play out of the back foot. Yeah. So I reckon that's an area I've improved since I probably played with you a few years ago. He's hitting through there because of my head, but it's probably means other parts of my game have suffered a little as well. Yeah, 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 like that. It's moving to the offside, but that's because your feet are going there, okay? And then you can step. Yep, yep, like that. But as soon as you're, if you feel like for yourself, as soon as your right eye goes to your left, then you start falling over. Tipping over, yeah, yeah. I think I'm getting too square there. Too front on. Yeah, you square the hips up a little bit, yeah. But that's just the result of you leaving too much weight on your left leg. Okay. So like if you step here and leave the left leg there, you, you're going to square up. Yeah. That's one of the big reasons why you don't want to leave it. Left foot there and put weight on. So if I go there, leave that there, transfer weight, I have to square up. Yeah. If I go here, bring that left leg across with very good weight on it. I'm not going to square up at all. So that's, for me, I know that's, you know, you can think about two things two different ways. But if I get that right, I won't square up. If you get your footwork right, your upper body will be nice and 
side on. Okay, like you maybe I mean some people might look at it, yeah, keeping it upper body side on. Yeah, no, you're good. I think it, I just got to do a lot more work on it. Yeah. Obviously. This ball. This ball. So important to leave early in the season. Even though you've got one day at the start of your A lot of bottom hand. Yeah, I think that week is probably a relief. Quite low. Actually, hit it right. Got the match up. This ball. Oh, shit. Sorry. No step. But it's a result of my feet. Yeah, but it's the result you get so far out in front. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah, pushing at it, yeah. Nothing. Just 
Just a fraction longer if I get back. Yeah, you got back better, but me, that is. Leave. Yeah, but even for me on the back foot, if you're getting across, you want to get your head in line. If you're playing there, so you have two options, you get further across, or you let it go. I think I was not fully focused there. I was probably thinking about when's the short one. Just coming off this way? No, no, I feel like it's pretty good, but I feel like you could basically just hold it there for a split second, because what I reckon you're doing is you're actually not too bad through there and then just getting a little bit lazy with your finish. Yeah, yeah. So if you feel like hit there and then just hold it for, say, even yep. half a second. That's something else. That way it will stay through there. That's what a lot of people do. If you get used to hitting and then coming down there, all you need to do is a little bit early. And you're off, yeah. And all of a sudden you're off. That's something I was focusing on at the end of last year, was just holding that, not letting that natural instinct to go that way come in. Because you might feel like, you hit it, you might feel like, oh, I've held that there for a long time, but reality is... I haven't, yeah, I know, yep. Top end's just, top end's just a bit weak in general, I reckon. No, leave it.
This ball. This ball. And you'll see that one. All on the front foot. So different from that one before is because yeah, you left your weight on that left leg and that's why you squared up. Your lower body squared up and you're using the upper body squared up. This ball. This ball. Yeah. Yeah. Looks good. You can work on your and you know the mind. It's good. Cool. Cool, it's good. I like that because I think I hit it later than some of the others. Yeah. I hit it. Is that about fifth? Uh, fourth. Fourth, Yeah, I'm just losing my top wrist on a. Yeah, but I was directly straight from that. Yeah. You did so well on there. Back. Yeah, that's that's where I said at the start. I reckon the last few years I haven't been getting there and hitting them. So that's something over the course of the season doing a bit of work. I want to make sure I'm in good positions to put that away. Yeah, and I think there was probably a fair bit of mental to that. If you work on getting your weight here, okay, so make sure that it's physical. I go for the full shot. I'm pivoting off that back foot. Okay, all my weight's on the right leg. Yeah, yeah. Probably 90% of the weight's on the right leg. Yeah. And if you're used to playing majority of your back foot off, still off your front foot, yeah, it's going to be hard. You know, you're going to be there cutting or you're going to be cramped when you pull. You're not giving yourself a chance. Yeah. Yeah. Lazy. See you like one day shot, maybe. But if you're playing it two day, you're not playing that. No. You can let it go over your foot or cut it in.
Oh, that shit ass. Come on. This ball. This ball. Okay, good step. Lazy foot back. Yeah. Driving through, and it's one of the oldest things in the book, how you drive through with the cradle. So you drive through with your arms, okay, through here. Okay, if you stall your arms, so if you'll get here and the arms stop, and you let your wrist go, then you straight away hit out the front. Yeah. So see, if I'm there, but I keep this left wrist strong, then all of a sudden I hit the ball late. But to do that, to get your power, you've got to drive through with your arm. Yeah. Okay? So what you do is sometimes you get there, your arms stop, and then you flick your wrist. Yep, yep, I can feel it. <coughs> Could have been a bit closer. completely aware of what I need to do. I just need to do it. <laughs> just need to practice it a bit more, I reckon. But it goes back to what we talked about at the start. I mean, obviously here, you're having a hit in the net. You can think about things more than what you would in a game, but yeah. to, for you to get it, you've got to do repetition. Yeah, 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 exactly. Obviously, you know, keep it thrown in the or else the machine. But I think this sort of thing's really good as well because I'm, I, I'm sure I reckon, well, I'm not sure, but I'm pretty confident I'd get there when I know it's short. Yeah. It's be able to get there when I don't know the length. That's the skill. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And that's yeah. why it's so good like throwing and not just throwing someone throwing your half volleys or someone throwing some short cut pull. Yeah, I picking up lengths. Some, some ways, I think that's a lazy training. Yeah. People go to the training and go, oh, can you throw us 20 half volleys? I mean, anyone can bone them on on the front foot when you we know where it is. Know it's going to be there. Definitely. And then obviously the same as your full shot. You know, so if you know it's going to be short. You can nail it. Exactly. Right, people are going to nail it. So yeah. you're better off spending. People will be better off having someone throw to them for say, even if it's ten or fifteen minutes. Yeah. Just throwing them everywhere. Yeah. It might be that you might say, oh look, or you might do it. Okay, can I just have a few minutes front foot so I can just get the feel of it? Okay, maybe you know, for you, you'd be like, I want a few front foot where I want to be strong with my top hand. Okay, and then you might think, oh, I want just a couple on the back foot where I feel like I've got my weight on my right foot. And then go into And then it. go, the next 10 minutes, I want them everywhere. And, you try and, put them yeah. like, and that's where I, I, this sort of practice with you, I, I think is what I need. A yeah. lot of flicker, just picking up length yeah. and really getting into good positions. And I think not, I've not hit that much in the last, since, since the season ended. So I think it'll come, but I just got to do more. This ball. And this ball. This ball. This ball. This ball. Out. Bit caught on the crease. Yeah, at least you had a strong left crease. Yeah, that angle is still with it. 
Bis bald. Cool. Bis bald. See, for me, if you're going to play that, that's where it is. Yeah, through. I think it's very hard to check your eye when it's that wide. Yeah. It's so unnatural for you. From being here to get your elbow out there is almost impossible. Yeah. So that's it. just wait for a bit longer. Watch it. Release it. This ball. Win this ball. This ball. Watch the ball in this ball. Not bad. Yes, you got your left foot kind of more in line with the heels, so that can get the small side off. You're right down a bit away on that left foot, but that was an improvement. Yeah. Slowly. Felt like it left me that one, but I wasn't far across enough. She left it I'll be cutting that. This ball. This ball, come on. Damn on this ball. Stuck on the crease. Caught on the crease. I think I've probably went there a bit early and then got caught. It's been really good at Parlas and you know, watch over. First few, you were getting caught on the first lot, and then you've been actually really got. It's been good, or I guess you got that one. Yeah, that's just back. So that's a good one to watch. So you just left up there. I mean, essentially, you're playing like that. What's that? Nick D. Top wrist of the week. This ball. This ball. This ball. Not bad. Getting better. Not perfect. Getting better. So my back foot feels like, and I look at it, it feels like it's covering off stump, but my weight's not on it. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah.
and actually for a while just keeping your left foot completely off the ground when you make contact. Yep. Now you want to make sure as well on that back foot that you're mainly on the ball of your back foot. Okay, so I won't be on the hole of my foot here. Okay, so I'll be more on the ball of my foot and my heel is probably even just slightly off the ground. That allows me to be positive with my head, but then that also allows me, not that light, just a little bit. Yep, so all your weight there. That allows you to rotate like your hip a lot easier. Okay, yep. it allows you to pull a lot easier. Okay, when you cut, you'd be on your whole foot. Yep. Everything else, you feel like you're throwing your weight on the ball of your foot. Yep. This ball. Lazy. Yeah. All leads. <laughs> Come on. This ball. Win this ball. I think it's so much better on your side on your hip. Yeah, I think I played that well, but I think I sort of semi cheated because I was like, okay, I'm going to go get ready to go back this ball. Whereas I've been always looking to get forward because that's the sort of. So I've got to get into that position when I'm not thinking about going back. Yep. This ball. Nice. Get off. Stop. Stop. <sighs> Sorry. Leave it. Thanks, chum. Just got to do more on that back foot. I just think as well, I think it's a symptom of a bit of grade cricket and playing on slow wickets and medium paces where you just have, haven't done enough of it, haven't focused on it enough. Yeah, but I feel like sometimes 
going back, you know, thinking of how I played as a great cricket as well, yeah, get the guys that aren't that quick. But the thing is, if they do drop a little bit short and you go back, then you can potentially cut and pull them, and then you put them under pressure where they think, I can't drop short, so then they bowl fuller, and then that you can hurt them. up the front foot because you get more half volleys. If, you're, if they're bowling that backward of the length and even just short of the length and you're coming forward, very hard to drive, so the ball's coming up almost waist height, and you're trying to drive here, so then they're, they're always going to do that. They're going to bring their length back, but if you're good enough, even it might be that you pull it, but if you're good enough to get back and maybe tuck one for a single, and I think, oh, it's a bit short, I'll get up a bit fuller. As soon as they get up a bit full, that's what you want. Yeah. Half volley. Whack. Yep. So even though you're lucky, someone might be quick, I reckon it's still very Got to get back, yeah. It's the same with spin. You've got to, you know, you want to have quick feet. Just because someone's bowling slow doesn't mean you have slow, slow feet. Same, you've got to be nice and sharp with your feet, okay? Because you push back quickly, it opens up all your back foot shots. They float it up and get down the wicket and get on the full of half volley. So. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Thanks, Tom.